Um, I'm Bob Keith, and I've lived in Fells Point since the mid-1980s. And by profession, I've always all my life been a newspaper magazine person, editing and writing, and I do have a couple of books that I've, uh, I've authored. What, what uh, magazines did you work, for? work with? Well, I spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C. I actually created one magazine called Afro Re Report. I did that for the African American Institute. It's still in publication, which is pretty good for any magazine to be in publication after 40 or 50 years. I um, right. also uh, was news editor of the uh, Congressional Quarterly Service in Washington, and then uh, went over to the Los Angeles Times Washington Post News Service and was there about. 15 years or so. So it's been a range of stuff, a lot of different fields and, and interest. Yeah. Well, can we start by talking about um, the demolition of historic buildings in the 80s and the 90s here at Fells Point? Well, I came to Fells, when I came to Fells Point, uh, the, the place was, there's a lot of change that took place really in in the 1980s, and it really was was setbacks. Uh, I know we'd won the road fight, but um, we had a lot more historic buildings here then than we do now. Particularly over here where I am, I'm on Bond Street and on the on the on the west side, we had the original terminal warehouse down at the foot of the street. Just down from that was the what we called the zigzag building, Miller's Wharf. Um, that was a Ruckert terminal. We had over uh, west of Caroline Street, we had this fantastic uh, lumber company, Atlantic Lumber. It was a little oil company over there too. Then we had Lacey Foundry, Graflin Bag. Uh, these a number of these buildings had a lot of potential to be part of a of a you know, re, 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 re renovated Fells Point. I mean, where you save the historic character, but you then you put to modern, you put put uh, all kinds of housing and shops and so forth, and it makes it very exciting. Like Omaha, Nebraska, of all places, had this wonderful warehouse district, and one person basically owned it. And they've done a wonderful job of preserving it. Now, Fells Point, we lost a lot of opportunities back then, um, and for various reasons. One was um, one was that the developers began to come in right then, and um, and they looked at some of these buildings and they decided they were small and really not significant, and um, so they made some deals as to which ones they would save and which ones they would tear down. Uh, actually, one of the deals was to save the terminal warehouse and save the Miller's terminal building, um, and of course they're not there anymore. Uh, and um, Michael Silver was a developer who, working with uh, Mayor Schaefer, uh, bought up a lot of the property over on this side, and he did uh, save some of what was considered the, the, um, the really important uh, 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 historic buildings. In fact, they, they conducted a number of archaeological digs and uncovered a lot of the old foundations of some of the other buildings. And, and, um, but then things began to happen. Uh, the, um, well, Mayor Schmoke came in and we, there was a lot of pressure to de develop. People wanted to develop various parts of Fells Point. And maybe they didn't want to do it right then, but they wanted to stake out their development rights. And the mayor uh, uh, commissioned a plan then for Fells Point, which was called the Nutter Plan, N-O-T-T-E-R, I believe it was. That was really the second plan. There was a loose sour plan before that. And these plans were to kind of give a professional um, uh, planner's guidelines for the development, but the plans, you know, we, we also have, there's plans, but then there's politics. And everyone, even then, there was, Fells Point was quite attractive to developers, but everybody wanted to push it just a little bit far for their own project, and you do that cumulatively, and you have just 
pressure for overdevelopment. And, um, and so, um, and at that time, I, I don't know, the, the mayor commissioned the plan, but then he didn't really follow it. We had kind of a weak city council. Uh, we had, I don't know, I used to, this is terrible to say, we had, our council, I call them the, the, uh, the, um, the felon and the bigot and the nincompoop. I mean, and people would know exactly who I was talking about. It was not a high quality representation city council. So, um, uh, with all of that, that was when the, the, the developers began beginning to come up with their plans, the community felt that there were a lot of them were really pushing the envelope a lot. If they all happened, then you'd have a whole lot of problem Fells, in Fells Point with traffic and, and parking and, and just over, over, you would kill the goose. Uh, this was a wonderful potential um, place for very, a very, very special community in Baltimore. And it is, it still is, but, but we, we keep trying to, we have to fight to save it, protect it from over, just over development. And uh, it started then, but there's other things that happened back in the 80s. Um, um, one thing was that uh, we had a series of fires. And uh, I think the, uh, the Henderson's Wharf uh, was gutted by a fire right in while it was in the midst of development. But over here on the um, west side, we had a terrible fire in 1988. And the, uh, uh, one evening, this, I think I was over in some other part of town and looked over and saw the flames. And like everybody else, we called, came rushing back to the area to see what's going on. And um, this wonderful lumber company, the Atlantic Lumber, went up in flames, a lot of great wood seasoned, wonderful, the kind of wood that you just can't find in lumber yards anymore. Uh, and then right near it was the Apex little little oil company. Well, they, they, as the drums, drums got heated up, be, became explosive, they just went up in the air, like shot up like mortars. And we were watching these big drums go up in the air. And the, the fire spread to the... Uh, Lacey Foundry buildings, and I think I think that was the time when the Grafland bag and the waterfront. So that one fire, I, I know there were investigations for arson, and I don't know that they ever f pinned it down to anybody, but it was a major, to me, a major loss of potential of, of really having something so special in this part of Fells Point. Uh, another problem was that uh, uh, some of the people who bought the properties back then. It did look kind of promising, but then the market kind of fell apart. Now, with uh, Constellation properties, um, Christian Poindexter ran their uh, pro uh, property real estate uh, office back then. He be later became head of the company, chairman, and so forth. Um, but... Um, there was something about Constellation, the way they, the real estate people worked, is that anything gains that they had, since, since it's a regulated monopoly, the real estate part was not regulated, so any gains they had would go directly to the stockholders. Any losses they had would also go to the stockholders. And the last thing that they wanted to do is show losses. And so, uh, so there was... They didn't want to really sell the properties at a loss, but they didn't want to develop them either. And um, in the end, they decided because that the market would be better if they tore them down, and then people could see the site and the waterfront and so forth. And um, so we lost some great buildings just through Constellation's um, inability to really move and had to sit on for about 10 years, including the terminal warehouse and then the, what we call the zigzag building. So all those combined together uh, really kind of put us back. And, and we ended up with a lot of empty land down here. Of course, when the, when the um, uh, chrome plant went out of business, that what more empty land. I used to, when I first came here, the, the trains went right by the house here on Bond Street going to the chrome plant. Probably if I'd known what was in them, I wouldn't have found them so charming. But, but I certainly did at that time. 
But since then, there has been a long period, and we're finally coming out of that period. And I think some good things are happening, but they're not quite the kind of things that could have happened if they were really based on these wonderful old uh, historical buildings that we were here before and that we've lost. Do you think, um, do you think that has changed more from industrial to residential? Unlike a lot of the, uh, like the buildings that burned down and stuff were industrial. It seems, you know, a lot of the changes have turned a little more to the residential side. I mean, that might be a positive of the, of the change. A lot of the historic buildings you lost seem to be industrial, industrial buildings. Well, a lot of the buildings that we lost in that period were, um, they, they, were they were built as industrial buildings. But, of course, we've seen now... Um, in Baltimore, what kind of great adaptive reuse you can make of of formerly industrial buildings like Tin Deco down in the waterfront. It used to be the biggest tin can uh, company in the world, and now it's 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 it's, it's residences. And right next to Canton Cove is wonderful uh, condos, and and the same thing here. So so um, it's just the, the kind of the structure, the hull of the building. Is, is the basis, but then it, you, you have the look and feel of Old Fells Point, and that's what, when, you, when, you, when you have to just st build from the ground up, and there's some, I guess it's good architecture that's going in now, but it, you know it's not, it's compatible, but it's not Old Fells Point. Right. Well, how yeah. would you compare uh, Vienna Harbor to Fells Point? Um, I guess similar things have happened in Vienna Harbor. It's definitely built up into a mo more modern uh -huh. architecture. Well, all the time I've been here, there's been kind of a, I don't know if it's a rivalry, but it's certainly, Fells Point has is, is maintained its independence from the Inner Harbor. And um, I don't think Fells Point was appreciated quite as much in the days when I first came here, as it is now, well, it wasn't. There wasn't as much here, um, but I think, of course, the independence goes way back to the beginning when Fells Point, just across the street from me, the founding fathers of Fells Point met, met at the London Coffee House to decide whether to join Baltimore City, and I guess they were correct in doing so. But I think Fells Point would, would actually, if it had just stayed a, a separate, incorporated city. Um, th things might it might be different even now. I mean, Mount Steam is kind of the engine of Baltimore, but it, it, it it's very capable of sustaining itself, and it was then. Um, but um, uh, I, th I think that the kind of growth we're having now, a lot of it now is very much um, uh, residential. I guess it just seems like a, the waterfront seems like a great place to come and, and live. Uh, what about the the recreational pier debate? Uh, one of the things that's happening today, as we as we reconstruct uh, Fells Point, is um, is that this uh, recreational pier has has really come come before us as something. Uh, that we have now an opportunity to do something with. Uh, we had before, but then I think we were kind of looking to the future with Fret Pier, and then the homicide people came along and, and tied it up for, I don't know, what was four years or more, with a very wonderful, it was so exciting to be here when, when they were here. And, um, and I th it, put, put, it put itself and Fells Point on the map, and I don't think in a negative way, even though it's dealing with homicides, um, so after that, um, I know the city just just didn't do anything with it and decided it needed to be re restructured or re reinforced. I guess that's the word. So there's a real opportunity here to 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 to, to put create something in the recreation pier that has a really helps give Fells Point helps preserve and spotlight its uh, maritime character. 
That's you, certainly the kind of use that should have something that reflects and, and accentuates the real maritime personality of Fells Point, in my opinion. Do you have any uh, specific ideas? Excuse me. Take a break for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chris, I'm ready. Okay, maybe we could talk a little bit more about um, Fells Point and mm -hmm. some uh, special memories you have. About Why don't you ask a question you asked before? Right there. Oh, you want um, more about the pier? What, what would I like to see? Yeah, because you were your feelings on uh, what you think should be done with the pier. Well, th was, there's a lot of good ideas for Breck Pier that have come along. I personally think that that it's some kind of small, effective maritime museum should be part of the picture. There is the Maryland Historical Society has made a good beginning with a museum on Thames Street now that just covers just the age of sail or. Maybe that we might call it the age of when Fells Point provoked the British into, into the War of 1812 with our ships, and then again with our ships we defeated the British and drove them away, and that's what's kind of what is covered. But the, so so much has happened since then in the maritime history of Fells Point, and and Baltimore, uh, and shipbuilding, and uh, of course as along came after that is when the big paddle wheel steamers came along. And um, this, the, the Baltimore was a paddle wheel steamer hub of the Chesapeake Bay for a hundred years, and and we were just the, the focal point for so much, and that really needs to be uh, captured in in a, in a maritime museum that we we just there is none now in Fells Point. There was, or in Baltimore, there was a nice museum in the in the lower part of the. Historical Society and Monument Street, but that's been pretty much dismantled and put in storage in, con in connection with their major wonderful expansion they've made. So there's this, this the time has come, I think, and the wonderful opportunities there with Rec Pier to incorporate a, a, a well, well done maritime museum, not just a bunch of models and pictures, but to really tell the story in exciting ways. Also, in modern museum, you have things for kids and you, the whole family. Uh, any museum experience should be a family experience. And, um, and, but, but the opportunity is there now with Rec Pier. So that's how I, how I feel about that. Well, I'm curious. Uh, Jackie was mentioning to me about uh, you remember a, uh, like a brew pub in an old one of the old houses here, right, right in your neighborhood? Oh, oh, let me. I'm sorry. Do you want Do you want to get that? Sure. And and. Okay, so tell me some good stories about some of these old. Well, houses that's you just you find a surprise. Uh, no, no matter how long you've been here, you keep finding surprises and with these old houses. Now, right across on Bond Street. To, a little bit to the south, Dorothy Papps, she just moved out. Uh, she, and her family's been here for years. And, I mean, they, ha they had, it, was, it wasn't the Papps Brewing Company of uh, Milwaukee, but that, that was, it was the Papps name. They had Papps Beer. And as I understand, probably the, some of the tubs and whatever it was you do with brewing is still there in the basement. Um, then just up here, I think it may be the building that's been incorporated into the Black Olive. It was the, one of our first newspapers was in Baltimore, was in that building, the journal, or I forget the name of which one it was, but, uh, and uh, of course, I mean, everybody, a lot, had, a lot of people just had their own, they, they did things in their own houses. We still do that in, in cases. Uh, a lot of us have different kinds of small businesses or activities we do in our, in our houses. Well, let's see here. <laughs> so you see less and less and less of that going on. You figure uh, has to do with the the modernization of uh, Fells Point. Well, I don't think people are coming in here now to have their little shops in their houses. I mean, people are coming in here now, or anybody that can pay the rents or prices to, to live here. I mean, they got to. 
a real job elsewhere. <laughs> and they're just coming in here to stay and uh, spend the night and weekends and so forth, but they're probably commuting to some job where they get the money to, to pay for their waterfront view. How do you feel about that? Look at Chris, and, but how do you feel about the changes in the neighborhood? Um, I think uh, um, there's, I guess, the, the neighborhood has changed. It's, I've lived here, one, one of the changes, of course, you, you miss is, I mean, there's some of the people who've been here for a long time are kind of, one by one, they, they leave one way or another. And uh, um, there's a lot of young people coming in, and that's very exciting, really. It, 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 it's too bad we don't have schools and, and recreational places that, I mean, that, that would attract people that, that, with their families. We don't really have that. But it's, I think there's a lot of vitality in having young people coming in. Um, they, of course, young people don't have the institutional knowledge or background, so uh, I don't know, we have to kind of hope that they will really come to really respect and, and appreciate the, the, you know, what Fell's Point is and, and uh, the, you know, that we can all be together in keeping it just the great place that we all think it is. Did we cover the list? Yeah, we've covered the list. Anything um, else you feel like you'd like to talk about? Um, well, we can stop now if you want, or you can grab the paper if you want. Um, <coughs> or are there any gaps in your video that... Uh, um, well, it's hard to know where the gaps are going to be until I interview everybody. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. and then there's always unexpected things. You know, like the brewery, or like, you know, a comment about, you know, the neighborhood changing, or, you know, something uh -huh. that, you know, that kind of pulls at a heartstring or something. Um, it's not always easy to tell, you know, what, what's really important before you're finished. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember that fire you were talking about over here when the oil drums were pulling. Were you around? Yeah. 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 I used to live on LSA Street. Uh -huh. Oh, that was something. That was... Now there was another fire down at the uh, terminal warehouse, the pier. I can't remember exactly when that was, but that didn't really have any, any. I mean, it ruined the pier, but the pier was abandoned anyway, and it, and um, it didn't have any si really significant impact. But this other fire sure did. What do you think about these uh, big parking garages there? They're putting up now. In are we on? Are we on now? Yeah, we're on. Oh, okay. Film is practically free. I mean, you know, it's like $5 <laughs> for the whole thing. <laughs> I can always cut it later. <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden you see these big uh, five-level parking garages going up. I mean, well, parking garages are, um, are a, a, a challenge. And, uh, I mean, because uh, the bigger they are, the uglier they are, but also the bigger they are, the more capacity they have. And uh, and the the thing that drives us all nuts is trying to park on our own streets and um, and I, we don't have this uh, we don't have this worked out yet and I don't know if we ever will completely but uh, we've got the garages there now but they haven't really been integrated into the whole parking management for Fells Point where where there's really f full utilization of those garages in a way that it's not really not too expensive for people to go into uh, but at the same time they help keep the streets clearer I think I think retail business is hurt by um, the street parking problems more than the retailers even realize um, I mean if they did realize it they'd get themselves in their employees off those streets and into the garages so that the customers could come down because there's just this feeling it always has been for so long that well you, you don't want to go to Fells Point to buy something because you, you know you can't park there we've got to overcome that we have now with the parking garages and a new parking authority downtown to manage things we do have now the opportunity to really develop some 
parking plan that really utilizes everything and makes this more friendly for outsiders to feel they can come here and that they will be able to find a place to park. So you don't find that the, the retail business in Fells Point is a negative towards the re residential standpoint from living down here? You think it's a yeah, what, one of the great things about <laughs> living in Fells Point is it's such a mix of things and uh, um, there's some, um, I mean, part of, of course the restaurants are just, we have the best restaurants in town. And every ethnic um, uh, group that you can think of has, there's a restaurant here, I mean, it's going to be Slavic or Chinese or Japanese or French or Italian or Greek or um, almost anything. And uh, that that's true also with the shops. There's uh, I mean, there's just wonderful brass works down here, and uh, and I th it's just great to have just outside your door and within an easy walk, you can go to, to, to places that... Uh, sometimes I wonder about some of the shops, whether... It seems to me, when you're competing the way you have to, if you have a real specialty, like the brass works, everybody knows if you want brass, you go there first. It's like having a model train store that, that was down under the viaduct, terrible location. But so I think we, I'd like to see more specialty shops that are, you know, the best in town. But uh, certainly it's wonderful to have them all here. Of course, the restaurant, it's hard for me. I can't walk more than half a block when I'm down to Duda's on the corner. And then just, I mean, they have the best soup in, on the East Coast, I think, sometimes. So we have a great, to me, great mix and great opportunity to just go places and enjoy enjoy yourself. Now along with the uh, the good food and, and the restaurants they enjoy so much though comes to quite the weekend nightlife down here. Do you think that's a negative or a positive one? I mean, you have a lot of college kids and stuff that are in the streets. Lately. Well nightlife has sure gone through a lot of changes since I came here. It was terrible at, at, at that time when I first came. It's it's kind of eased up now, I think, with, I hate to say it, but with the movement downtown on uh, Marketplace and Live Power Plant Live and so forth, I think that's taken some of the more difficult kids. I mean, the kids are really too young to drink, and and um, and, and I don't know. I just, it seems to me that the, the problem of the Friday and Saturday nights, from a resident, resident point of view, is easing. Um, but I, you know, I, I still think it's interesting for people to come here, and uh, so I just I think this is uh, the problem we're just kind of working our way through. What are your favorite parts of Fells Point besides the things you've already mentioned? I, I, I felt felt like so, attracted me from the beginning is um, with, with, of course the waterfront and uh, I've always I grew up in Michigan and I spent a lot of time on the Detroit water Detroit River waterfront with my parents. I worked on Great Lakes freighters and uh, and um, and the commercial waterfront is so exciting here in Baltimore. It's because it's close in. I mean it's right. Do you across the Put a Bond Street, and there's always the smokestack of a sugar boat that's come up from South America or some place unloading. It's all there all week unloading a domino sugar, and so just to, to look out to be able to see the waterfront and see the sh big ships. Uh, that's really the t to me the, the most exciting part of of Fellsman. And there's always there's always something you always get surprised when you go by Broadway Pier. I mean. Um, there might be some huge passenger ship that's come in. I mean, just this last week, suddenly there's a three-masted uh, sh uh, ship out of some movie. Well, it is out of some movie. It's the Bounty, made for a movie. But it's, it's it, they've come here to and the place where they love to tie up is Fells Point because it's so much to so much fun for them to to dock here and it's for their crews. They've got something to do and. And uh, so the, 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 the tall ships, so-called tall ships, is, is, a, is a very major attraction of Fells Point. What's your least favorite parts of Fells Point? Uh, 
Um, you got the waterfront, then then as you go work your way up Broadway, um, it kind of changes kind of quickly. And as you get north of maybe Bank Street, it's getting really interesting now and kind of exciting with the um, Latino influx and, and a lot of new nice looking restaurants and so forth. There's kind of this middle area, I guess around Eastern Avenue, that kind of looks like it's left over from the 1940s or 50s or 60s. And uh, I think we need to, I just hope that that kind of evolves into something a little more um, attractive to, to everybody. And if you had a magic wand and you could wave it and one thing would change, what would it be? Well, George Bush would go out of office. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that would... <laughs> it's not that relevant to Phil's point. <laughs> I can put it in anyway. <laughs> I can't think of anything I would do with a magic one. If you had just one thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you could look back at looking at all the things that you've done in Fells Point and been involved in, what do you think is the biggest contribution you've made personally? The thing you're most proud about having been involved with? Whether you know whether you were the only cause or uh -huh. but what what's the, the the best thing you think you've worked on and contributed to or done? The one thing when you come here, you, you you do tend to get active if if you're not if you're not going to work every day nine to fives, so particularly in, 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 you know, around here. And um, there's so many causes. And I, I've gotten involved in a lot of them. Many of them have been totally lost causes, and it was a waste of time. I mean, like fighting the height of the Wyndham Hotel and and um, some other things. But uh, I remember. I remember I had something to do with getting the permit parking program in here, which is so controversial. I thought the homeowners were, were going to lose it because I think the city council people were beginning to to lose their um, nerve on it. So I got involved in that and kind of independently, and I think I helped to make that come through. To I think a lot of people now that were opposed to it then are very much one of be part of it now. It's it's kind of a boring thing in Fells Point, but it's also something that really touches the nerve of everybody. Um, I'm uh, I've been trying to get involved with getting some better public transportation here, uh, but whether um, it hasn't happened yet, so uh, who knows? I'm, I'm certainly hanging in there and uh, trying trying to, to help make that happen. I, I, I feel like those things because they're kind of boring to other people. I mean, a lot of people are so much interested in architectural design and and things like heights and densities of buildings and something called FARs. And I don't even know what a FAR is. I, I never did learn that. It's floor area ratio, but I don't know what that means anyway. So I've thought that well, there's they're not paying enough attention to some of the some of the boring parts of it, like parking and transportation, so I've kind of tried to focus my attention on that area because there's enough people around that are looking at the other things. If you could name one person that's living today that ha you feel has made the biggest contribution to Fells Point, who would you, that, who would you say that would be? Um, there's so many people in Fells Point that have given so much, Nancy Conrad and and others uh, uh, in the earlier days. I mean, they um, so, sometimes people kind of finally just go back to what they're doing and leave it to others. So, so, uh, one person who's really hung in there and has been a source of inspiration um, to uh, a lot of people is PJ, Jack, Jack uh, Preacher Jack. And... Uh, and uh, and his his he state he sticks in there and he's very wise and very persuasive. And so so he, uh, he would be 
I think he's been very, 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 very much of a local hero.